welcome <coughs> to today's service. My name is Bernard Nzioka. Our message today comes from First John chapter two, from verses thirteen to seventeen, and our topic today is on the levels of Christian maturity. There are three levels of Christian maturity that John lists, first John lists, children or toddlers, young men, and fathers. In this passage, or in the old book of first John, God's goal in this test is not for conversion. It is to mature believers. It is to grow them to maturity. The fundamental to spiritual growth is that we are to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Growth in itself is not merely performing religious duties in church or carrying out religious obligations that are given to Christians or satisfying religious demands. In fact, all of this can impede Christian growth. Growth is experience in God. The primary goal of spiritual birth, which is salvation, and spiritual growth is spiritual maturity. The goal of having a child is not the child itself. It is to win the child to be an adult. This is the parental goal, and everyone cherishes it. God's goal is not your conversion. It is important and fundamental, but it is for you to grow or to mature in Christ, to be a doubt, an adult Christian. God wants to see you grow up, to experience him on a level of consistency, whereby you evolve your own principles of spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity, by definition, is the ability to look at and live life from the perspective of the spirit rather than the flesh. It is being able to see as God sees and respond as God responds to issues and situations and challenges. To top it up <coughs> is to bring, to, to be like Christ or to grow into Christ likeness. We partake of the character of Christ when we mature and we have an intimate experience with God only to the degree that we are consistently looking at and living from the vantage point of the Spirit of God and not the vantage point of our own flesh. Maturity is not achieved just because you come to church consistently or you tithe consistently or you give offertories consistently. Maturity is achieved because you look at life and live it from the vantage point of the Spirit of God's leading. When the Spirit of God leads you, basically you are in, on the right track to success. You your maturity always will be measured on our day-to-day -day realities and challenges that you face in life. First John was written to tell the Christian or now to maximize their experiences with God. It is not a book about salvation. It is a book about maturing. It's a book about growth. It's a book about intimacy. It enables one to grow towards spiritual maturity, towards Christ likeness. This is where we have an intimate association with Christ. It is not a truth in a book, but truth in our lives. In other words, we transfer Christ from, be from being a truth that is recorded in the books or in the book of the Bible which is a library of books, to being a truth in our own lives. In other words, 
we live the truth that we live, we read in the Bible. Christ has to become real in our lives. That is what Christian, Christian maturity is. When you become mature, <coughs> God is no longer in the pages of the Bible. Only he becomes real in your life. He is seen in your life. You become a person who always actually shows what we call lifestyle evangelism to others who do not know Christ. Your life is no longer what the preacher says in the sermon, though it is important. Help me repeat that. Your life is no longer what the preacher says in the sermon, though it is important. But what the Lord has said in your heart is what your life becomes. To mature, you have to depend on the word of the Lord to speak to your heart. You have to learn to commune with the Lord. You have to learn to have an intimate relationship with the Lord. You must be consistent in your Christian life such that nobody can actually <coughs> uh, start doubting your Christian experiences and Christian life. There are three levels of maturity as recorded in First John. They are toddlers. Toddlers are the ones from verse 12. It says, I am writing to the babies, that is to the toddlers among you. A toddlers are dependent upon external factors to survive. They cannot survive alone. They have to depend on other people to nurture them, to win them, to maturity. This level I'm calling it the naive level, whereby you don't know what is right, you don't know what is wrong, you have to be guided, and you have to have experiences based on what other people are guiding you through. And when you are a toddler, is when you get saved immediately, and you start being nurtured in the ways of the Lord. You start hearing the gospel pierce your heart and teach you how to live Christian life. Basically, when you are a toddler, you are dependent on the pastors. You are dependent on Christian groupings that will mature you. You are just like a child. First Corinthians chapter 13 says, When I was a child, I talked like a child. I behaved like one. But now that I'm mature, I stop the ways of childhood and I'm living like a man. Basically, what a toddler does, he does things that are irrational, things that may not make sense to anybody. And when you punish a toddler for doing what he, it does, basically you are just inflicting pain on somebody who doesn't understand what happens. Toddlers are vulnerable in every way. The devil can use Christian toddlers those who have just been born again recently and can mislead them. And that's why we need people who can actually stand with them, be there for them, nurture them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, Paul is telling the church at Corinth that because you are young in your faith, I gave you milk, not solid food. The longer you live, you are to reflect maturity. You should not continue living on milk. There should come a time when you have to live on solid food. And so that level of maturity from toddler, it graduates you to a higher level, whereby you start learning the truths on your own. In First John chapter 2, we have the second group, <coughs> the group that I'm, I'm calling the level of vanity. It is explorative group. This group, according to John, is referring to them as young men. These are teenagers. These are people, all young people are in between status. Teenage is an in between status. From being a toddler to becoming a mature person, an adult. And that's why these teenagers are referred to as young men. They are strong and have to overcome the wicked one. That is the devil. They must learn to steer away from the evil, destructive and impairing battles and wickedness. 
They are in the warfare, all struggling to grow. They should not love the world or the things in it. That is what the Bible in 1 John tells them. Teenagers should not love the world or the things in it. The world stands for the world systems, not the physical world only. It is the universe in its entirety. It includes the abstract spiritual reality referred to as the wisdom of this world in 1 John. Surviving and learning the hang on the teenage challenges or teenage realities moves you to the next level. But at this level of vanity, teenage years are years of battle where you are embattled and bombarded with new realities and new deals that you have to make. That bombard every teenager every time. We have peer pressure and all forms of evil challenges that come their way. But surviving these challenges, because John is telling us they are strong and they need to survive wickedness and evil, it is what makes teenage stage, the vanity stage, where they are exploring everything very important for spiritual maturity. During the teenage years, God wants you to use the power of the word to overcome the pressures of the world. I repeat that. During teenage years, God wants you to use the power of the world to overcome the pressures of the world. You do not come out of the teenage years until you learn how to use and appropriate the word of God in your problems. This means you have to brave on with your life of using the word of God in the right way in your life. In other words, the word of God should become your shield. The word of God should not be used without reflecting on the challenges that basically are facing you during this particular time. Teenagers are caught in between dependent and independent. They are dependent on their parents and they also want to be independent spiritually to be able to make moral, spiritual decisions on their own. And that's why they are in between being dependent on other people to charge their spiritual journey and also are graduating to independence whereby they want to be calling the shots themselves spiritual, spiritually. They reach a point where they should be discerning to know the difference of loving the world and having the love of the Father in them. Because this is something that is still dawning on them. It's something that they have not really grasped. They have not wrapped their arms around it. But they have to reach that point where they should be discerning to know the difference of loving the world and also loving the love of the Father in them. The Bible tells us that you cannot love the world and love God at the same time. You cannot serve God and serve mammon at the same time. And that's why when such terminology is used in the Bible, it means that you have to make a choice and follow one way. Anything that pushes your king from his throne in your life should be done away with instantly for you to experience maturity. Anything that pushes the king from your life should be done away with instantly to enable you to mature. In James chapter 1, verse 4, says, Do you not know friendship with the world is enmity with God? This is a call by James to steer away from the worldly desires and love each other. We should not stand in the world's brokenness. We should not pursue worldly but righteousness of God. This leads us to desire to mature, to be like fathers, to graduate from being teenagers, though we are strong and we experience so much of the worldly system that is coming our way. We should desire, when we reach that point of making that spiritual choice of maturity, we should desire to be like fathers. We should not lose the consciousness of eternal and take the trip to the canoe. And that is something that I need to repeat. We should not lose the consciousness of the eternal 
and take the trip of the canoe. It is always great during this vanity level of maturity to understand that we have to make that choice, make that decision to follow Christ as our personal savior and to learn and to want to have more about Jesus according to the way the song has taught us. More about Jesus would I know. More of his saving grace. You need more of that. You need to learn more about Christ so that you may graduate and move on to the next level. And that's the level of maturity itself. And this level is the third level and I'm calling it not only do we, don't we move from the naive level to the vanity level where you want to chase after everything and lose everything, we come to the responsibility level. Under responsibility level, uh, John is talking in chapter four, verse 14 and verse 16 and 17, talking about fathers. Fathers are grown-ups. Fathers are mature people. The fathers know him and love him. They have experienced him. They have been with him. They know him and they have experienced him. The distinction between the teenager and a father is that they know him from the beginning. Fathers know him from the beginning. John is writing from the vantage point of the disciples of Jesus Christ. They walked with him in the course of his ministry. They knew him while he was ministering, healing, teaching, and also proclaiming the kingdom of God, calling people to repentance. They knew what he taught and they understood the basic realities of living with the divine himself. And that's why to mature, to reach the level of those disciples who are with Jesus Christ, it means that you must have seen him. You must learn from his feet under his feet. And that's why John is telling us, these have seen the Father. And therefore for teenagers to come to the level of Father, they must learn from the fathers so that they may get what they got from the beginning, according to John. They know this person, they know Jesus Christ. They have experienced union with Christ at a personal level. They have interacted with him. They heard from him straight from his mouth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 verse 9 to 10, they, it says, they have seen things which eyes can see. Hear that which ears can hear. Things that have not entered the thoughts of men. These are things when you mature, you need to brace yourself to actually interact with. Things which eyes can't see, ears can't hear, things that have not entered the thoughts of men. These things are for those are for those who love him. They reach a level when they can understand that. They are for those who love him. They have developed intimately and also relationally with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> These things are revealed by the Spirit of God. They cannot just come when you are still living in the flesh. Fathers are fathers and they are mature because these things are revealed to them by the Spirit of God. They have surrendered themselves to the Spirit of God. God allows you to experience these things outside of yourself. In other words, they are a bit removed from us. But God wants those metaphysical things to be made known and clear to us. If we mature, we experience them. God allows us to experience those metaphysical realities that cannot be experienced by people who are struggling. The only way you are going to know God is when God reveals himself to you, according to verse 11. When God reveals himself to you is when you get to know him. And we need to get to that level whereby we should allow God to reveal himself to us. In verse 14, it says that the natural man does not understand the things of God. When you are in the flesh, you will not understand the things of God. You have to be in the spirit of God for you to understand the things of God. That's what fa why fathers are important. They are mature. They have retained a level of maturity 
consistency in their maturity, whereby they understand these things are of God and these things are of the evil one. Verse 15 says, He who is spiritual understands the things of God, because the Spirit of God illuminates him. He who is spiritual understands the things of God, because the Spirit of God illuminates him. Be basically, what we have to understand is that if you reach that level of dependence upon God, of being consistent in your walk with God, walking worthy of the Spirit and walking worthy of the Lord, basically, you become spiritual and those things that you can't understand are revealed to you by the Spirit of God. In other words, He illuminates you. He gives you the light to understand these realities. You want to grow so that you may know him. That is the reality of fatherhood. You want to grow so that you may know him and love him and love to serve him. What is the meaning of spiritual maturity? Just look at that. We've seen the three levels. There is naive level. There is a vanity level where you chase after everything until you break even and know what you want to do in life and what you want to pursue in spiritually. And then there is the father, the, the father level, which we are calling the responsibility level, whereby you have to re be responsible for your actions. You have to be consistent as a mature Christian to live for Christ, to be like Christ. Therefore, what do we mean when we talk about spiritual maturity or Christian maturity? One thing that we have learned from the Gospel of 1 John is that John wants us to have the passion to grow into spiritual maturity. The church becomes the greenhouse to provide you with the right environment to grow, whereby pastors are serving you, evangelists and teachers are teaching you. Church has become the greenhouse to provide your, you with the right environment to grow. Thus, the meaning of spiritual maturity is to grow into Christ-likeness. The meaning of spiritual maturity is to grow into Christ-likeness. Exhibit the Christ-like thinking, undertaking, have Christ morality, have Christ conduct in your real life. I repeat that. When you mature, you have to exhibit the Christ-like thinking, Christ-like undertaking, Christ-like morality, Christ-like conduct in your real life. To experience him as God in your life and appropriate his teachings on your daily life so that you may grow spirituality, so that we may grow up and become mature and be that person that wants to please God. Our aim is to enable you to grow to that perfect union with Christ, perfect understanding of who God is and live like him, to drive you from being God-like, God to obtain his righteousness. That is our goal here. And therefore, as I come to a close, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the three levels. The first level is the naive level, whereby you are a toddler. You depend on other people for you to survive. You need to be nurtured. You need to be um, weaned. You need to be given what we call milk and not solid food. But you are nurtured in a way that you end up taking that solid food when you transition to the vanity level, that is the teenage or the level of young men that John is, first John is addressing, telling them that they are strong, but they have defeated the evil one. You reach that level when you defeat the evil one. You overcome all the challenges that are put on your way, the roadblocks and the adults that come on your way. Then you are on your way to maturity. Because during teenage, that's the time when majority of them fall away. But in that stage as a Christian, you need to brave on. You need to trust on God's leading for him to give you the opportunity to continue growing up. Then finally, the third level is the responsibility level, whereby you mature, you become a father, and you start nurturing others, bringing others close to the fold of Jesus Christ, being Christ-like, being the righteous person to live a life that pleases God all the time. And I want to leave you by telling you that Christian maturity 
you must have the passion to grow if you have to mature as a Christian. You must have the passion to grow. The church becomes a greenhouse to provide you with the right environment to grow. And the true meaning of spiritual maturity is to grow into Christ-likeness, to be like Christ. Exhibit the Christ-like thinking, undertaking, morality, conduct, all this should be done in your life, in your real life. And finally, for you to mature, you have to experience him as God in your life and appropriate his teachings on your life so that you may grow spiritually. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord, God, help us as we continue serving him. Let me pray for you. Father, I want to thank you for those who have heard this message. I commit them to you to start their, their life of maturity in different stages where they are. Pray for those who are toddlers to be dependent, to be wind, to mature, to become teenagers. Teenagers with their strength, I pray for them so that they may overcome the wicked one or the evil one. And fathers, I pray that they may continue nurturing and maturing people to be Christ-like. Father, give us the grace to do all this and we, will, we thank you for giving us the ability to understand today that there are levels of Christian maturity that we need to understand. And we need to evaluate where we are so that we may continue growing and have that passion of growing up to be like Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.